introduce the next story. Okay. Today. So um, a few weeks ago, maybe it was I don't know, maybe it was a few months ago now. I saw this movie at the Fox. It was a locally filmed movie. My friend was in it, and so he invited me to go see it, and it was really great. It was called Trade In, and then coincidentally, Penelope roped another guy into storytelling for us, and he happens to be the producer of this movie. He's our next storyteller. His name is Brian McLaughlin. Please welcome him to the stage. Thank you. I'm going to sit. So I'm, I'm a film producer. I've produced uh, four feature films, here in, mostly here in town, um, and a bunch of shorts and music videos. And the most common question that's asked of me is, what does a producer do? And it's, I've been asked so many times, I've thought about getting a t-shirt that says this is what a producer does. Um, so that no matter what I'm doing, people will say, oh, that's, that's it right there. Whether I'm carrying trash to the dumpster or <laughs> whatever it happens to be. Because even it happens on the set, you know, people will come up to me and say, what does a producer do? I'm like, well, what am I doing right now? So, um, <clears throat> but in general, what a producer does is he's, he's the program manager, he or she is the program manager of the film from picking the film to make, to finding money for it, overseeing the pre-production, production, and post-production, and then getting the film sold at the end. That's the responsibility of the producer. He's basically um, an entrepreneur running a little business that the film, that is the film. Um, I like to say that entrepreneur is French for unemployed. <laughs> um, and people ask you, well, of those phases, in the process, which is the most difficult? And my answer is always the phase that I'm currently in, whatever phase that is. And for the last little bit over a year, that phase has been the money-raising phase of the, of the film. Uh, I have three projects that I'm currently trying to get funded. Um, it, it, when I started this production job, it, uh, it, it was easy, as I'll tell you in a minute. This, this phase seemed easy, then it got a little more difficult and, and then it got hard. But looking forward, because of what I've learned during this more difficult period, it looks like it'll be somewhere in between easy and hard. So I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Um, but let me put the whole job in the context of this, of the uh, economic times. I left a career at Raytheon, 19 years I've worked at Raytheon in, in the finance world uh, in September of 2005 and went in full-time into film production. Um, just a few weeks after that, I heard a presentation from a guy who was explaining the historical economic cycles, and he said, in two years, we're gonna have this huge downturn. And I was like, no, we're not, because I need money, and I depend on, I've just left a secure paycheck. I'm gonna depend on the, a good economy for investment and that sort of thing. So I kind of waved that off. And then two years later, um, my father, in the middle of August 2007, my father was telling me about this newscast he saw about the subprime mortgage market collapsing and how the newscaster, her expression looked like the end of the world was coming. And I was going, ah, Dad, he's always like that, you know, with this pessimism and there's no way. I mean, they gave him examples of recent similar events that had turned out to be, you know, they blew over in a few weeks. They goes, no, no, this one's going to be different. And I was going, yeah, whatever. And uh, fortunately, Unfortunately, as, as has always been the case in my life, I found out that my father was right and I was wrong. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so I, as I mentioned, I left, I left Raytheon in, in 2005, and in 2007, now I'll place the, uh, some films in this storyline. Um, in 2007, uh, along with two other producers, um, we raised money for the first film that I produced, first feature film. And it was a film noir, a, a crime story. It took us 10 days to raise the money, uh, which really is incredible, even I mean, despite the fact that it was a very low budget, it was under $100,000. But within 10 days, we raised the money, and it, that kind of got me spoiled. And um, I was like, well, that's what producers do, you know? <laughs> we raised the money in 10 days. Um, the next year, now it's 2008, and um, things are a little, a little bit different, and, and uh, it, Another film, same budget range, this one was a, a thriller, uh, and it took me about, me and, and, and the other producers, about uh, 
two or three months to raise the film. In fact, we went into production not having money to complete the film, but to, to finish shooting anyway. And um, so we got all that money together and we, and we finished that film too. A few months later, now this will be uh, October, November of 2008, I was hired to produce Trade-In, uh, which is a, an enjoyable film. So you should all see it when, when you get the chance. Um, but that film was already funded. I was just hired to finish, to, to do the production. And um, to me, it was like, hey, this is a great sign. This, obviously, there's an investor willing to put $300,000 into a film, as it turned out. It, it, initially, it was going to be less than that. But, um, but so I was thinking, oh, this is, this is a positive sign. But, but really, the, uh, what I should have been th noticing was that the reason he was putting money into the film is because his, his business of 30 years, car sales, was not doing, well, he was looking for an, a plan B. And so it's really a sign that things, uh, the, the economy was not going well. Immediately after that film, so December of 2008, we moved into the next film, which is a, another comedy. And I, I even said, let's start auditioning now because we wanted to shoot it during the, the, the school break of that year. Um, and we, so we held auditions. I said, don't worry, we'll, I'll get the money in a few weeks. It'll be, it'll be no problem. We'll, we'll, we'll start shooting before school breaks. So were, a year over a year later, I have not raised a penny for that film and two other films that I'm working on, a, uh, a thriller and a psychological, a horror and a psychological suspense. So this year has been a completely drastic downturn. Uh, but as a producer, my job is to keep pushing forward because if, if I don't get the money, then the, the story doesn't get told, the director, the cast crew, they don't get to work and, and the film doesn't get made. And so I keep working and now there were signs Obviously, that, that I mean, I knew it would be harder this time because one, we were looking for more money. It, it, you know, it's time to pay people really what they're worth, and so we're looking for you know the three hundred thousand dollar range. Um, two, the investors that we had gone to originally, you know, they were basically tapped out. We'd already they they'd done their part, and so I knew I had to go to people I didn't know, production companies, and, and other thing investors, and so I knew that was happening. But what I didn't expect was that the money supply for investment would pretty much uh, not completely dry up, but venture capital in the United States has dropped by two-thirds since the recession started. And so I was not expecting that. And um, in fact, I went to a, a producer's conference last June, and all these A-list producers are speaking, you know, J James Cameron, Clint Eastwood, and I mean, people like that. and. The recurring theme was how hard it was to get films funded right now, uh, and then on a more um, a more mac micro level, you know, locally investors, people who would normally have invested, said last year I would I would have done it, but this year I can't. Uh, we even went I even went to I saw that Jim Click had executive produced a film that came out about a year ago, so I contacted him, and he, he even wrote back a nice email saying thanks for thinking of me, but but uh, every spare dollar I have goes to my car business right now. Now of course. What he considers a spare dollar and what I consider a spare dollar <laughs> is a little bit different, but that's the situation. Um, but then there are also some unexpected benefits. Um, some of the investors for, for Good Boy, the second film, which were already into a bit of the downturn, they put their money into film because they were taking it out of real estate in the stock market where they've been having some disappointments. And so they were looking for another investment vehicle. And, and film, despite the reputation that it may have, uh, particularly at this lower level, is, is, is generally profitable. I mean, you can usually uh, maybe double an investor's money. Um, the producer of, of Amelia that recently was in theaters said to me, you know, at that budget level, you, you almost can't go wrong um, once you raise the money. Uh, another, another unexpected benefit is because I've had to throw a broader net in looking for the money, I have made so many more connections than I would have made. If, if I had gotten the money locally in, in weeks or months, I never would have had contacts with people who generally fund films um, across the country and, and even in places around the world. That now in the future, I, I have these contacts that will be available. One in particular, um, I, in late summer, I contacted Roger Corman, whom I met at this producer's conference, and it looks fairly likely that he, he will be willing to, he wants to work with, with me on, on uh, some project coming up, hopefully in the very near future. Um, so, and that, I never would have contacted him 
if six months before that, or even a month before that, I had raised the money for the film. So there's a silver lining to the fact that th the money hasn't come so quickly. Um, and then I've learned some, some really great lessons, just life lessons, but, but uh, also about in the financial world, that I wouldn't have learned if I hadn't had to go through this more difficult time. The first one is, is that no matter how dire things look, I'll survive. We'll all survive, you know. There are really, really uh, oppressive financial times for all of us, um, even if there's not a you know, bad economy. We all go through ups and downs. And sometimes it just looks really <laughs> like life sucks. But then, you know, down the road, it doesn't suck anymore. And, and no matter how things go, it, it, it turn, things turn out well. Um, so that's one is that I'll survive, and, and sometimes that's with help help of others. You know, people who have faith. Two is is that whenever someone says no, that's just a step closer to yes from someone else. Because like I said, even though venture capital has dropped by two thirds, there's still a third of the money out there, and someone will want to uh, fund these films because they are really good projects, and they will turn out to be profitable. Uh, one of the speakers that the guy who produced um, Saving Private Pri Ryan made the same comment that every no is a step towards yes. Every time someone tells me no, it just invigorates me more. Whenever someone says, the third thing is, whenever somebody says something's impossible, it just says to me, it hasn't, I haven't done it yet, and I just have to work harder. <laughs> and finally, the sun will always rise again. I mean, there are days that I just get really down, and they're always followed within a day or two by some good news, a door opening, something that'll cheer me up. And so down days actually, I find them to be optimistic now because I know that means around the corner something good is going to happen. So in hindsight, looking back at what a producer does, a producer stays optimistic, he keeps driving forward, and he gets the film made. And that's what I'm, I've learned. So thank you.